Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Katerina Blashanka. I'm a psychologist, psychotherapist based in Kyiv, Ukraine. Uh, I work with couples, families, and also with individual clients. Uh, my lecture today should take about 45, 50 minutes. And uh, today we're going to talk about uh, the things that we can do uh, to deal with coronavirus pandemic. Uh, I plan to discuss with you today three main issues, three questions. Uh, first are the emotions and feelings that we experience now, the things we can do and do not uh, to help ourselves to cope with anxiety and also to help to support our families. And the last but not least thing, how to remain productive when we work at home. Uh, we have YouTube chat where you can put your question as I go through. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer all your questions at the end of my presentation. Also, if there is something that I say that isn't clear, please let me know. And I'd like to know where you're from also for me to know the audience. So if you're ready, let's begin. I'll take a look at the chat at the moment. Okay. Uh, so, to set the scene, uh, just yesterday in Ukraine, the government announced uh, the situation of emergency. Uh, and here in Ukraine, all the educational institutions, uh, the public transport, underground train system is stopped, uh, the institutions are closed. Also, the shopping malls, cinemas, restaurants, obviously, they are closed too. Uh, at the moment, all the businesses, they try to uh, change, reorganize their operation when it's possible. Uh, and only shop, um, food stores, household stores and medicine stores are open. So I, was, I suppose we all find ourselves in more or less similar circumstances. We try to adjust um, in some countries and cities, quarantine rules, they are more stricter. And somewhere it is possible that it will be enforced anytime soon. Um, and I guess we all, including myself, now we are trying to, to cope, to adjust to this new reality, new situation, and learn to tolerate uh, amb ambiguity. Um, I would like to say that... Uh, the pandemic is an extraordinary situation. It's not something that happens regularly in our lives. So uh, we shouldn't expect ourselves to act ordinary in extraordinary uh, situation. And the way we will behave, of course, would be different from the way we behave in our day-to-day -day life. It is a huge stress for us. Uh, so any emotions, anything you experience now, anything you feel now is okay, it is fine. And of course, it is okay to be scared. It is okay to feel anxious. It's okay to feel angry, annoyed. It's okay to panic. So these all emotions, they are made to help us uh, to cope with the situation, to understand uh, what is going on around us. Uh, what is the difference between these emotions and what we can do to understand ourselves better and thus to help ourselves better? Uh, first is fear. I know that many of you might experience uh, that you're scared, you feel frightened, especially when we get some news, some information from other people and uh, relatives. Fear is emotion caused by the threat of danger, pain or harm. Uh, usually fear has an object. This is very situational emotion. And uh, the purpose of fear is to warn us and to protect us. Usually fear doesn't last long. As soon as we get ourselves out of the situation, uh, as soon as this stressful factor is removed, uh, the fear slowly calms down. We get back into our more or less normal uh, state. Uh, most of people now deal with anxiety. We, a lot of people suffer from anxiety. Anxiety is a constant feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with uncertain outcome. We feel uh, anxiety when we can't, uh, we, we can't predict what is going on 
around us and we can't predict when it, uh, what's going to happen. Uh, when our brain fails to um, predict and construct any comfortable uh, scenario of their possible um, actions, uh, what it does, it constructs its own, it produces its own scenario. And that is what makes us feel more anxious. Uh, it reveals our concerns about the future. Uh, unlike fear, anxiety is always about the future. And um, we feel anxious when and because we don't know what to expect. When we know what to expect, usually our level of anxiety gets a little bit lower. Even if the situation is difficult, uh, when we understand that we have to mobilize and do something important, still, anxiety might be less. And uh, the last feeling I'd like to mention is panic. Panic is a sudden uncontrollable fear on, or anxiety, often causing wildly unthinking behavior. Uh, behavior um, which is hasty, some hasty actions, and uh, panic is usually sudden. We, we can't control it. None of these emotions we can control. Uh, and what is important, what you may experience is that panic and anxiety, they also have physical symptoms. You can see them on your screen. Uh, you can feel when you're anxious that your hands might be trembling. You can feel that your heart is beating very, very fast. Uh, you might experience dizziness, uh, hypertension, uh, sweating. Uh, it is difficult to breathe. So these symptoms, if you notice, they actually remind of some disease symptoms. Uh, and... Uh, what can happen to us that we interpret uh, these anxiety symptoms as symptoms of some disease or infection or, or virus, coronavirus. And when we notice our symptoms, the more we think about them, the more obvious they become. So we think about them more, we pay attention to our bodies, how we feel ourselves, um, do I breathe okay, or is it difficult for me to breathe? Uh, how difficult it is. So the more anxious I am, uh, the more my body reacts to this anxiety uh, and the more I get convinced that there is something wrong about me, something going wrong. Uh, and this is actually the circuit of panic attack. Uh, if uh, these feelings I'm talking about, fear, anxiety, panic, uh, if they happen to you rather often, if you feel that they cause too much trouble, if they bother you and they uh, affect your day-to-day -day life, your daily relationship, please don't hesitate and contact some professionals. You can call helpline, you can talk to your family doctor, whoever is there for you to assist, but please don't stay alone with these feelings. Uh, the interesting thing that uh, anxiety and social panic is more contagious than the virus itself. And this is what we experience at the moment. Uh, social contagion is the evolutionary mechanism that was made uh, for us to survive. Because at the time, this contagion meant that when we see that something going on, we will stick to our tribe and thus we will stay alive. But what is going on now that um, social contagion is the thing that causes people to, uh, to buy dozens of toilet paper rolls and uh, a lot of packages of buckwheat and some cereal. And when other people see this, of course, they feel anxious because our brain tells us something going on, people around us doing weird things, or maybe, as you can see on your screen, it is worthy for us to behave the same because social contagion is the spread of some uh, typical in society behavior, attitudes, and ideas. And that's why some of us may think, okay, maybe I don't need so much cereal or, or sugar or anything else at home, but I'll get them just in case. Uh, when we face our own anxiety, uh, we can ask ourselves questions, different questions, just to monitor the reality and to monitor our own state. So 
please, when you feel that your anxiety raises up, ask yourself, what is that that I'm afraid of? Am I afraid to get infected uh, and go on somewhere? Or is it hard for me to observe, to look at the empty shelves, to see desert street, streets, to see people rushing around in the supermarkets? And because uh, we are surrounded with so much bombarding information that it's hard for us to deal with. And uh, we also must understand that anxiety, um, anxiety is contagious, already told you that. And we also must understand that all the information that we get at the moment causes uh, this anxiety. It's like supports this anxiety. Um, uh, the lack of information causes anxiety. Uh, too much information causes anxiety. Conflicting information that we have now, guess what? It also causes anxiety. Uh, we've been talking a lot for now about things that have been going on and how hard and uh, uncertain it is, but there is definitely something we can do. So we proceed to this part of the presentation. What do I do? What do I do to help myself and then to support my relatives, my family, my friends? First of all, what we can do to help ourselves is to admit, and today I'll be talking a lot about admitting, about accepting that our lives have drastically changed within the last couple of months. And uh, to accept this fact, we need to grieve the, the loss of our ordinary everyday to day life. We have to uh, admit and understand that certain things are not the same anymore, uh, but they are not gone. They somehow transform, transformed. They might be different, but they are still there for us. And uh, the denial that many people show by refusing to wear a masks in uh, public places or uh, using sanitizer or still showing up in the park. Uh, it's also the way to deal with this uh, situation and to skip the grieving. And both of these emotions, denial, like nothing happened, everything is okay, we shouldn't worry, and panicking, they, they are extremes of the coping strategies. They are extremes of dealing with our helplessness and unpredictability of the situation. We all now face that we're losing some personal control over our future, our lives, and sometimes it is difficult to notice the difference where we still have our control, where we still have power, and uh, in which situations uh, we can just... Uh, Look at them, observe them, and let go. So the second point is uh, uh, the situation uh, shows us that there are things uh, that we can control and the things that are totally behind our control. Remind yourself of a difference. Take a look at your everyday life and ask yourself, where I'm still powerful, what can I do, and uh, what things are lying behind. Uh, and what we definitely can still, uh, what we definitely still can control, what we can definitely do for ourselves and our families uh, are following the guidelines of your local health authorities. Uh, they are not only necessary to keep us healthy, to protect us, to postpone the infection, but they also may give you the feeling of this power and control of your body, your feelings, your state of mind. We need to admit and accept our feelings. Uh, unlike many people might think, uh, we can't just get rid of control uh, our emotions. It's not possible. What we can do let them in, leave them through. Uh, and if you suffer, for example, from general anxiety, try to split it uh, and notice certain fears. I will show you then an, an example. Try to slice your anxiety thinly. 
uh, if you feel that you are trembling in general, that you don't feel okay, that something worries you, sit down, write a list of your fears. You can do it on a paper sheet, you can do it uh, in your phone, cell phone, and look at these fears. Uh, no matter what comes to your mind, just write, put it in, uh, write it down, look at the fears, uh, do all of them belong to you. Uh, honestly, answer yourself this question. Is it my fear or did I, did I caught it from someone else? Maybe from social media, my relatives, uh, a neighbor, I don't know, anybody else. Uh, then try to think what is the probability of this thing uh, to actually to happen uh, what are the chances what are the odds how do you know this thing is actually going going to be true i know that um, it is difficult for many people now when they look outside and the picture outside the window remains of some uh, movies uh, it is uh, our brain easily goes, continues into this picture. But those are the movies and we have uh, the picture outside the window. We can call our friends, we can call somebody uh, we, we trust, we uh, can call somebody who we know is quite reasonable in this situation and we can ask this person, what do you think? Uh, does this situation look the same for you? Um, is there anything you can do to prevent these fears? And then we go back to this idea about the things that are in our control and things that are out of our control. If there is anything you can do, try to think of a couple of simple small steps or actions uh, that will help you. Don't, uh, don't make a huge plan. Uh, you, you might not have all the opportunities to implement it, uh, but uh, implement it, uh, but it can be one day plan. It can be something simple. I will talk about it later. Okay, uh, so um, then uh, you can observe your reactions and act accordingly to these reactions. Notice uh, what enhances your anxiety. For example, maybe social media, maybe the news, maybe talking to certain people. Uh, maybe when you go outside to buy food and you see people wearing masks and uh, uh, for some people it is very, um, very difficult, to, uh, very emotional to hear um, ambulance outside their windows. Notice these things, notice your reaction, notice what is going on to your body, and I will tell you later what, what we can do about these reactions. Uh, you can also write it down, because sometimes we forget about such things, and um, according to this, it is just the right time to be picky with everything you consume. Uh, and I mean, first of all, the information you consume, Communication we consume because the relations and relationships we're in is also uh, the thing that affects us very much. The, and um, now when you know that anxiety is contagious and now when you know exactly your triggers because you were observing them before, uh, what you can do, you can limit the communications, you can limit the news uh, that make you feel worse. I don't say that you have to close your eyes, close your ears and ignore everything that's going on around you, not, not at all. What I mean that you can choose two or three reliable sources and check them once a day. Trust me, now it is uh, totally impossible to, to miss any important announcement or communication. For example, in Ukraine, cell phone operators then send you text messages, uh, they send you Viber messages. So if something really important is going on, uh, you will know it. And you're not alone probably on this planet. Uh, you have relatives, you have friends, you have colleagues, uh, your neighbors, you have your boss, otherwise you wouldn't be at this lecture. They will also let you know. It is very likely that somebody will also send you the message to let you know. Uh, 
don't spend hours searching on internet for new information for vaccine or, or, or any other news. Don't look up your symptoms. Uh, there are certain recommendations of the health authorities, such as monitoring the level of your temperature, uh, etc. And trust me, they are enough. If it's possible, try to stay away from people who are too anxious or panicking. And you can say, how can I stay away from somebody who's panicking or actions when it's me? But I'm mostly talking about uh, other people. Uh, they can be your relatives, they can be your family, but uh, this is the time when, it, when you can think about your personal boundaries and uh, you can agree to discuss other things but the virus. You can talk about anything else but, uh, but the news. Mm. We can still have our date nights, dinner nights, family dinners, uh, some girl talks, boy talks, uh, and uh, do anything that we used to do just in front of our laptop screen. Uh, I will highly recommend you to take care of your physical well-being, which means eating well, sleeping well, drinking enough water. Uh, Try to keep your diet as balanced as possible. Uh, if you notice that you tend to stock up food and go buy long lasting food, you might know that usually long lasting food isn't that nutritious. It doesn't have enough vitamins and other good stuff in it. So uh, try to add vegetables, fruit, um, meat, cereal, grains in your diet. Uh, key food stores and restaurants, they still do deliveries without any problems. Of course, it's obvious you need to put your order far in advance, but food is still available. Uh, I, as you see, I put it in red, um, asking you to avoid alcohol. There are a lot of jokes on Facebook that by the end of this quarantine, people will be ending drunkies and uh, it's not a joke, actually, and it's not only about alcohol causing addiction. Alcohol is a huge depressant, and it brings people down very fast. Uh, first, you might feel that you, you're feeling better. It's easier to cope with the situation and your emotional state. But then you feel really, really sad, and uh, it can be not on, only uh, alcohol hang hangover. It can be actually an emotional hangover as well. So please uh, um, try avoid it and remember that it also reduces your immunity. Uh, another advice which can be of help is to be involved, to be distracted. Uh, some people now find it very helpful to do things around the house, uh, to make their homes more cozy, nice place to be living at. Uh, other people rediscover their old hobbies. They find new interesting activities to be doing, pleasant activities. So you can do anything to keep your hands and mind busy. Um, anything you can think of, anything. You can try different uh, things and anything that works for you is fine. Uh, please take your time to adjust. Don't rush yourself. Don't be harsh on yourself. Don't demand too much from of yourself. And uh, it is also very important not to rush yourself into various activities online. You probably know that now there are a lot of marathons, webinars like this one, and uh, lectures, and also uh, opera is available, different concerts and excursions are available. Please be attentive to your own emotions. Uh, it might be too much, especially if you're not alone at home, if all the family is, insi family is inside and you have a lot of odd things to do, these things can be postponed. Uh, many people, they talk about um, quarantine formal, fear of missing something out during the quarantine. Okay, what can we do to support uh, our families and friends? Uh, other people, they also have the right to their reactions. And honestly, we are not always good with uh, dealing with other people's emotions. 
uh, they might be different. They might seem minor, minor or irrelevant to us, but still they are important and they are real for, for other people. So try to respect them. Even if they are different, uh, you can try to admit their feelings. It's not very easy, but um, probably there is a probability that the same things that are going on uh, with you might be going on with other people. So if you are scared, if you are frightened, if you don't know what to do, uh, there is a possibility that the person near you is feeling the same way and you can, you can check, you can ask, are you okay? Are you frightened? Are you behaving like this because you don't know what to do? Is there anything I can do for you? Um, ask what exactly, uh, Ask what exactly you can do to help, because sometimes uh, we really don't know what is helpful. And you can ask the same question yourself. Do I know what will be helpful for me in this situation? Be assertive. Uh, assertive means um, no one, not, when I know how to say no without crossing other person's boundaries. And I say no within my boundaries. Uh, and honest. For example, um, a friend of mine, he's another friend, uh, she caught a flu, probably a flu, uh, and uh, she had high temperature, she wasn't feeling very well, and she called him and asked to bring some medication, and he told her, okay, I can do that, I can bring you the meds, but I'll leave them at your door. And this is an an example of assertiveness. She wasn't very happy about that. She was, how, oh, I'm, I'm okay, just a flu, but this is the way um, we can behave now. This is the way we should behave now, knowing this difference between uh, helping and taking care of ourselves. And if we take care of ourselves, then we can help other people in, in a proper way, in a safe way, in a healthy way. Uh, the last point is remembering about your personal boundaries. We will talk about them in more detail uh, later on. Few words about supporting senior age relatives, friends, family members, uh, your colleagues probably. Uh, it's not very, it might be not very easy uh, because as I already said, we are not used to, to deal with unpleasant emotions. Uh, now we feel this a lot we feel these unpleasant emotions they're not bad or wrong fear anxiety uh, when we feel annoyed when we feel angry they're not bad they are good because they are um, they let us know that things that are happening are not okay for us they tell us get away from there protect yourself but they're not pleasant to feel and um, I doubt that uh, most of you were taught how to deal with these emotions. And when we uh, go through our personal instability, our personal helplessness, and somebody else comes to us with his or her emotions, what we tend to do uh, is to devaluate, uh, dismiss his or her feelings. And when we say, Everything gonna be okay, don't you worry, uh, don't watch TV, never mind. These are devaluations and they don't, don't work. And um, it is possible that the person will come back to you and will be knocking to you and will be telling you, come on, listen to me, there is something important I'm trying to tell you, I'm not okay, I need your support, I need your presence, I need your help. And what you may say, um, I see it is hard for you. Uh, you may share your own emotions. You may say that, um, you know, I'm not okay too. It's um, an extraordinary situation we all are in now. And uh, it's true, we've never been before as connected or as isolated in, in this situation of, of, of COVID. Um, I'm doing what depends on me. I'm doing everything possible to protect us, to protect you from being infected. We have some certain recommendations, the guidelines. And what can I do uh, to help you feel better? Do you know what I can do? Is there anything uh, would be 
would be desirable for you to do. Um, I've seen this video on Facebook with uh, Italian uh, senior man who was trying to leave the house saying that he wants his coffee and his daughters, I don't know who they were, telling him, Papa, uh, stay, don't go, and I want my coffee, I want my coffee, leave, leave me alone. He just walks out the door, turns to the window of their house, knocks on this window and say, do you serve coffee? It is very important for, for senior age people, their routines and the things they used to do are very important. So please uh, try to help them reconnect to, to the habitual things, to the rituals, to the uh, things they used to do and like to do. You can help with ordering food, uh, with medicine orders, installing application, maybe choosing uh, some more simple devices, simpler devices, uh, and instructing on how to use these devices. Um, uh, also, quarantine might mean that uh, you're coming back to your parents or uh, you live with your grandparents at the moment. Uh, so it's, I hope this information will be of some use for you. Okay, now we continue from to the actual point of our communication. Today is working from home, working from home arrangements, setting your well, working, I'm sorry, working routines. Uh, I know that many of you have already this experience of uh, work from home arrangements, and some of you uh, had the chance to get to get used to that, and for some of them, even some of you even prefer uh, to work from home. But for a lot of people, this can be a totally new experience and definitely uh, it wasn't the case when all the family members uh, everybody was home at the moment for those who aren't used to work outside the office uh, home environment might be unbracing to relax him because there's nobody there to remind us of our schedule of our responsibilities and it's, it's not the same definitely not the same to work from home and it could be a bit of a challenge to organize uh, our working routine at home our home office when there are younger children and infants and i know what it's like i have a toddler at home it can be difficult and probably nobody expects you to be as efficient as productive as you were before, but we all try. And therefore it is advisable to sit down with your partner, your family members, with your flatmates, depending on what are your living circumstances are at the moment, uh, and uh, to do the next things. Set your working hours, agree. When you wake up, when you work, agree on your working place. If there are a few people at home working from working, Mm, you can divide the working space. You can work, for example, somebody works from kitchen, uh, other people from living room, balcony, bathroom. I don't know. There are other possibilities for you to do that. Uh, and it's important also uh, to set the breaks, to agree about the time for your breaks. Because, for example, if one person uh, wants and ready to, is ready to have a break and another one is having a Skype conference call or is very concentrated, it's, it might cause some arguments afterwards. Uh, now, especially now, when we stay home all together, it is uh, important to have our personal space and privacy. Even if you live in one room apartment in Ukraine, we have one, not one bedroom, one room apartments and some families uh, stay together in such a small space. Uh, thus, it is very important to ensure you have your privacy. Uh, agree to have some time for yourself. Do things together, but please do things apart. This is what helps you to, to maintain your good relationship. Sometimes we don't notice uh, what is the balance in our relationships and our partnership 
between staying together and having time on our own. And, and now we basically can feel it on a physical level that somebody is in our personal space. Somebody is jumping on our heads. Uh, uh, remember how you had your duties at school? You can use now that skill. You can agree with your family members, with your roommates, partner, uh, about your household duties. It is important to agree about who's cooking, who's cleaning, when cleaning, when shopping, who's taking care of the children, uh, who's entertaining children, for example, when another one has a very important business meeting conference call, uh, who is responsible and helping elderly relatives. Please don't uh, forget to explain your rules to your children and your parents, for example, if you come back to live with your parents. Uh, we sometimes forget uh, how children uh, how children are sensitive and attentive to our emotional state. Uh, they feel anxiety and they will be around you. They will be de demanding your attention if you don't explain, if you uh, don't tell them what, what's going on. Uh, and of course, depending on their uh, age of your children, you can choose different language. Um, for some children, and of course, for those who use their um, cell phones and devices, uh, you, you can show different uh, information. You can show cartoons, YouTube videos. For smaller children, it's harder to explain, but it's still possible. Um, so please, uh, please remember that the calmer you are, uh, the calmer will be your children. Uh, put, try to put on hold the home things uh, that can be put on hold. Uh, set the priorities, agree with your family, what are these things that are not so important now? Because there are, there is really a lot of, um, there is a lot of tension at home and a lot of things that, that we didn't have to deal with and settle uh, before at the same time. Now we have to, to do that all at once. Okay. Um, please, if there are any questions, write them down. I have the screen in front of me and I will, I will get back to them later. I, can, I see that they are coming. Uh, how to be productive at home? Uh, what can I do to be productive at home? Um, Again, it depends on your habits, it depends on, on your temper and your character, but uh, many people uh, face that it is very difficult to, uh, to, feel, uh, to feel to remain concentrated and be productive uh, when we feel anxious. Because our, our brain, uh, our nervous system is busy with keeping us safe, with protecting us. So it is difficult to learn, to study. It is difficult to work. Um, for some people, especially if their level of anxiety is higher, it is almost impossible. So first things to do are to help yourself. You can go back to those recommendations that you have listed above. And then uh, there are some advice that you can use um, to organize your time and your working space. First of all, have specific tasks and working expectations. Agree them with your managers, with your boss, uh, with whoever is responsible. Maybe you are responsible for your tasks and uh, terms of references, if you have them, they are very useful as well. Uh, so make them as specific as possible. Have the time schedule, uh, terms, uh, time limits, everything which is available for you is good. Design a realistic schedule for yourself. Uh, the most difficult thing about working from home is that uh, sometimes we wake up too late, we go to bed late, uh, we start watching some movies, uh, chatting to friends, and we lose that regular schedule that was supporting us 
during ordinary times. So make a realistic schedule, uh, put it somewhere where you can see it all the time. When you work, it is advisable to turn off all notifications from your applications, uh, emails, Viber, Messenger, Telegram, Instagram, everything. Shut them down. Uh, previously, um, there were a lot of advices about being uh, multifunctional and multitasking, but it's not what, uh, what is good for us now. It doesn't help now. Remember that our brain, even though we, f we might not feel um, a lot of situational anxiety, we still keep in mind it, it's, it's like a program running somewhere, you know, in the standby mode to remind and ask time after time that it's not the same. You can, you can just go outside, you can just go grab yourself coffee. So, uh, it is important to uh, concentrate on one task per time, devoted, for example, 40, 45 minutes to, I don't know, some communications, emailing, phone calls, whatever you're doing, writing some uh, software, designing, designing something, and then take a 10, 15 minutes break. Uh, make it your routine. You can set an alarm, ask somebody who's working there with you to remind you. And this is actually a good thing to coordinate your schedules if you work together with your partner. 45 minutes, you work together and then together, separately, you drink coffee, you hang around, you, you go, uh, if you have your personal yard, you can go to the yard or go to the balcony, have a have a break, smoke, whatever. Uh, please include meals and physical exercises in the schedule. Uh, we all now sit a lot at our laptops, computers, but especially when we stay home, of course, our level of physical exercises will go down. You might also have noticed that uh, uh, when you feel anxious, uh, your body, uh, the level of your muscle tension also uh, increases. Uh, and um, uh, it is very important to, to help yourself uh, to relax. What you can choose is contrast shower, hot bath, massage, yoga, pilates, stretching, meditation, mindfulness, breathing exercises, any body awareness uh, techniques or exercises, try them and implement during your daily routine, daily schedule, any kind of sports, but please uh, be, be attentive to yourself and it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be stress. Uh, don't get involved in, in everything at the same time. Uh, and you can also use some of these techniques during your working day. I'd also like to say a, a few things about uh, our relationship in the couples during this time, uh, because we have to be prepared that this alone together time might be not very easy. Actually, it might be rather tough for our relationships because everybody's stressed, everybody is uh, emotional, overreacting sometimes, uh, and we, we need to think of that, we need to remember that. Uh, you might experience, you might feel that you're more annoyed than usual, and your partner as well. Uh, sometimes uh, we cope with our helplessness and anxiety by um, displacing aggression. Uh, what I mean is that when we are angry about what is going on outside there, with the situation, with the virus, with our plans canceled, with inability to go see our relatives and friends, of course, we will feel anger. Of course, we won't be happy about that. But we don't have the possibility uh, to address this uh, aggression directly to the causes of this aggression and what's going on with that arguing and fighting between 
uh, each other uh, at home. Also, uh, remember that aggression can be an answer, a reaction for second distance. Remember, we are now staying together at one place too closely, and um, when we feel that somebody is too close within our boundaries, we want to put them away. That's why you can feel that you're getting annoyed with kids. Um, your, your relationship, which was okay with your partner when you had your breakfast, your dinners, and your uh, weekends, might be tougher now. Okay, <clears throat> if you have any questions about how, how other questions, how to help uh, your relationship, please ask. Okay, um, about body tension and relaxation, I've already told you. Uh, what I would like to remind you is that the way uh, that we interpret and treat the situation affects how we feel about the situation and how we feel in the situation. So what we think about the situation that's going on will, uh, will affect, you will notice it in our mood, in our emotions, in our body. And after all, there is no point in asking ourselves why did it happen to our society? Why did it happen to our world? Uh, why did it happen to our family? These questions won't do you any good. But what you can ask yourself, uh, what is there in this situation for me? What can I learn from this situation? What are the black spots and things that I didn't notice before? What are the things that uh, I was ignoring before? And what, what can I do with them now? Ask yourself, how you treat yourself? Do you take care of yourself or are you forcing yourself into things? Now, when you are at home, uh, when you don't have to rush somewhere, when you don't have to go somewhere, you will see, you will notice uh, how you eat, what you feed yourself with how you choose communication, uh, whom you call, what news you read. You will notice what movies, books, and other things uh, you choose for yourself. And then it's a good thing to, uh, to ask yourself, am I happy with those choices? What are the things you appreciate in your life now? Now when uh, the days are more, more alike, when they're the same, uh, what what are the good things? Sometimes these things, uh, they're not noticeable in, their, in the rush and hasty of, of the previous life. What are the things you can easily do without? Have you already noticed those things? What would you like to be different in your day-to-day -day life and relationships? You can discuss that with your partner, with your friend. And uh, one question that I like very much, and that I, I suggest you to ask your day, yourself, maybe not every day, but in some periods of time, you can ask yourself, what is the first thing you'll do when it's all over? And I'm sure it will be over. Okay. So, and now I'm ready to answer your questions. Okay, so... Uh, the first question is, could you recommend how to explain the situation to the kids because it affects them? Thank you in advance. Uh, if you could, Elizaveta, uh, if you could specify for me the age of children, it would be helpful because it's, it depends. If you have a toddler, if you have a preschooler, primary school child or teenager, for teenagers, you probably don't need to explain that detailed information, but please, uh, if you are still online, if you're still listening, um, write down the age. If, if not, I'll talk about different age categories. Uh, my daughter is almost two and a half and uh, Sometimes, I'll be honest, sometimes we go outside in the evening when there is nobody around and we can see outside the window that there are no people. Uh, we keep the social distance. We 
go outside for about half an hour. But during the day, what I tell her is that um, there is an infection. She knows now what it, how it feels to be ill. She knows four years old. Okay, so there's not much difference. Uh, she had a flu before. Uh, she had an ordinary cold, so she knows what it what it's like to to cough, to have her nose running. She knows uh, uh, how uncomfortable it is. Uh, so what I tell her that a lot of people uh, are ill now. In Russian, it sounds uh, she, she called her grandmother. Said, "Grandma, you know, people are getting infected." Uh, and I explained to her that we can go out parents uh, and she can see them um, through, through the screen. She can make a Skype call. And as soon as it's possible, we, we will go outside. And what I do, I also remind her every day because for small children and for four year with books, cartoons uh, and everything else, but this is a good time to to be creative, to spend time together, to play. Uh, if you work with your partner, you can agree with maybe smaller breaks. I was talking about working for 40, 45 minutes. You can work, for, for example, for half an hour and then switch, uh, switch to spend time with a child. Uh, there are cartoons on YouTube about the virus, where the virus, this coronavirus is like... Uh, a uh, funny cartoon hero and it walks around the world and uh, in this cartoon it is shown uh, that we can wash hands we shouldn't touch our face uh, we we should stay home you can draw with children you can uh, drawing is a very good uh, tool uh, to find out if a child understands what's going on. You can ask, can you, can you draw the virus? Can you draw your day? Um, and then you will see if the emotional state and what's going on with the child. Um, okay, thank you for this understandable and well-instructed lecture. Thank you. Uh, why should we grieve the loss of habitual life? Okay. Um, everything uh, that changes in our life is a loss. Uh, broken relationship, lost job, uh, the relative who passed away. So as you see, some very important losses, big losses and minor losses, they are still the losses. And uh, you probably know that each loss, it has certain stages. They're not necessary go... Um, step by step, it's like uh, denial um, when we first shock, denial, aggression, depression, acceptance. You have probably heard about the stages. And a lot of people in our society, what I noticed, they remain in these two, two stages, whether denial or aggression. And feeling sad what is depression about is about feeling sad feeling um, feeling disappointed accepting that uh, the life lives we had before and the way of life we had before was important for us um, appreciating that style of life uh, that is actually grieving that what i call grieving and when you go through the stages you can accept that and you can organize your daily life now in here and now is is it clear is, is it understandable let me know please Talk. I keep looking for adults to turn to so they can calm me down, explain things, tell me when it's going to be over. I feel like I have turned into a child. Is it another weird form of anxiety? Oh, this is a very good question. Thank you for asking this question. Um, it's true. It's true that any stressful situation, any uh, situation in which our experience is unknown and different, sends us in... Uh, psychological language regress what is regress it's when we come back to our certain level previous level of development and of course when everything is so um, unpredictable everything is so unclear when we get 
every day new information about the virus, of course, we, we would like to rely on somebody else. We would like somebody else to come and say, don't worry, I know what to do, follow me, uh, I will help you. I'm sorry. Um, uh, uh, follow me, I know what to do. We want a parent uh, to help us to deal with the situation. But the thing is that our parents and uh, adults, as you call them, they also experience this regress and they also need support. So any crisis is a time when, um, but the time that gives us a possibility to grow up. It's a time we can where, when and where we can look for our own supports. And our supports can be our job, uh, our ability to organize our daily routine, our ability to uh, follow health authority recommendations is very important that I am able to do that. I am able to take care of myself in this basic but very important way. Uh, our ability to be somebody else's support. Um, an interesting thing is that when we find um, when we find arguments, when we find information for somebody else, uh, and we talk to somebody else and calm down somebody else, we can calm down ourselves through these conversations. And it works really because when I was preparing this information for you, I was like, okay, I'm doing that on a daily basis. And it makes me feel a little bit better. So please don't be harsh on yourself. Don't demand from yourself that I have to be strong, uh, I have to deal with that. Come back to those things, um, ask yourself what causes my anxiety, in which exactly situations I feel like I need somebody else's support, and try to go through these situations. If you feel that it's hard to do on your own, um, you can look for mental health specialist or psychotherapist in your area. Hope I answered your question. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for presentation. Stay sane, everybody. Could you recommend anything that helps with sleep disorders, herbs? Mm. Uh, okay, I'm not a doctor and I'm definitely not some uh, uh, Comi voyageur uh, to, to recommend certain things. Only your family family therapist can do that. A family doctor. If you uh, experience really big troubles with your sleep, and you can, I, I don't. Uh, I think I missed that. I didn't say that it's okay to uh, to have troubles with sleep, and it's uh, sometimes you may feel that you have. Uh, very bad appetite or just the opposite you feel hungry all the time so first of all try with the schedule try with relaxation uh, try to lessen uh, reading news and keeping the blue screen in front of you before you go to bed don't read anything worrying uh, like an hour before you go to bed hot bath, bath, cold bath, uh, contrast shower, exercises. Exercises are very important. And only then, only then maybe medical uh, things will, medicine will be necessary. But those prescriptions, uh, they should be made by the doctor. And I also uh, would like to warn you, especially now, don't listen to like, you know, my neighbor used something and it helped, my friend used something and it helped, uh, only with the medical advice, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. I don't see any other questions. Uh, we have some time now. If anything comes up, please ask. Thank you very much for your feedback. It is nice to know, it is very important for me to know that it was of help for you. Uh, I apologize if sometimes I was a little bit, I was, it's a new experience for me, getting my practice 
totally online. So maybe I was interrupting myself once in a while, but I hope it will be useful for you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here in the morning and finding time uh, between your, your work and routines. Please stay healthy, stay safe, and all your families also. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs>